Welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Wanderings. My name is Joel. Let's take a look at whatever oddities we have in store for today. Today we are here at the junkyard to look at something a little different. Chesterfield Auto Parts posted on their Facebook page, this is it, about an electric conversion Saturn SC. I think it was an SC2. Check this thing out. Whoa. Okay, so. Let's get a full disclaimer to start this video. I am not an EV conversion expert. I know probably about as much about EVs as your typical enthusiast, but it's not all here. So we see we got these custom brackets mounts. I would speculate those are for batteries. They take batteries out of these cars, regular car batteries, lead acid and what have you. So I would guess that there were two big batteries on each one of these squares you know, fabricated, welded, attached. You might hear a car horn honking. That's the, the lot attendants letting me know that the day is almost over and I need to leave soon. It's a pretty good system. So this is what looks to be a giant motor and likely an old school DC motor. So, if my understanding is correct, the typical conversions nowadays are going to be more AC type motors. Uh, a lot of Tesla swaps, definitely motors that are smaller, make more power, but this still has the factory transmission, as far as I can tell. You can see all the lines going to it. I see some brightly colored wire that was probably part of the conversion. Um, you can see your brake master cylinder up against the wall with the booster. That looks relatively OEM. But you've got all these brackets and fabricated metal. And this is all part of the conversion. So I'm guessing that cable right there is probably the throttle cable. And the pulling on that throttle cable is basically what told the vehicle how much, you know, electric torque, power, whatever you want to call it, to get to the actual wheels. So, you know, it's still in the front here, so it's still going to be front wheel drive. But if it's still got the transmission, then yeah, you got a five speed. Wow. I'm curious about the mileage, not that it means much. 188,000, so we don't know when this thing was converted of course we don't we don't know the deal um i do see what looks to be the typical five speed manual and um there's no back seat again i speculate that's where the fuel tank would have been i guess they took it out but i don't know why there's a giant hole there now i wouldn't think for safety reasons you could drive it with a giant hole there i wonder what they had back there who knows? Something related to electricity, or maybe nothing. People have been doing conversions of the EV sort for many years. And this is really an oddity. This is not your typical enthusiast car, even. Uh, the only conversions I've seen in person were Tesla conversions with older classic cars that had a rear or mid engine because then you can put the the whole setup right over the drive wheels i don't think i've ever seen a front wheel drive ev conversion this is a separate topic for another day but i've always thought that the history of saturn was interesting i've always thought the sc2 in particular would have been a fun vehicle to own these were known for being very quick for what they were. They're not heavy. 
Uh, you already saw this side of the car, sort of, but they're not heavy. They have a twin cam engine that doesn't make a lot of power, but I believe there were a few years in the 90s where an SC2 won the national SCCA autocross championships for whatever stock class or whatever the actual nomenclature is. Uh, but this is a, a different beast altogether. Of course, pop up and down headlights for extra cool points. Uh, I'm really not sure what else I can show you other than just to give you an opportunity to see what's here. They still had the splash shield down below. I still see a front sway bar. I see obviously some relatively straightforward, uh, brightly colored wiring, like I said, that we know would have been aftermarket. You know, I wonder if this was a kit or if this is something they put together themselves. Um, I think those, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that brassy orange port may have been for air conditioning. I'm not sure. Does that suggest this doesn't have air conditioning? I don't know. I don't see any hard lines for the AC system. I mean, most of what I see that's stock looks like suspension, uh, the brake booster, master cylinder, and all of that. Uh, we've got a fuse box right here. Of course, I'm sure they added other fuses along the way, but they probably didn't use the actual fuse box. Um, I'm curious. Hmm. Some relays and fuses. Pretty normal. Again, we don't know how much they took out of this car. We, we really don't. Um, it's just an odd duck. Um, I did notice when I was back here. Check that out. Electric vehicle. I'm, I'm assuming that they put that tag on vehicles because of the potential liability of high voltage cables. I don't know how it matters if they're taking all the batteries out, but in any case, uh, maybe they don't remove the batteries from some hybrids if they're hard to get to. This being sort of a custom job, I would imagine the batteries were easy to get to. But, yeah. Never a dull moment at the junkyard. I'm not sure if they would have used all of the gears. Again, that's not an area of my expertise. I don't know if maybe first gear has so much torque that you can't use it. You know, it may come down to the individual driving patterns of the owner. I mean, your, your electric motor is gonna have torque in a much wider spread of, of RPM compared to a gasoline engine. I mean, what was this? Probably a 7,000 RPM rev limiter on the, the original engine in this car. I don't know a thing about the actual RPM limit of this particular DC motor, but I can imagine it's much more flexible in terms of what gear you need to be in, um, I think. That's one of the great things about electric cars. Of course, this is gonna be very different from a modern electric car, right? A modern electric car is gonna be one speed and there's gonna be some kind of gearing system to try to optimize the torque of that motor so that it works best for the, the road speed that vehicle is expected to travel. But this thing has five gears to work with and reverse, I, I assume reverse still works. I mean, you have to be able to go in reverse. I don't, I don't know that they, design the motor to spin the opposite direction, but if it works like it does with gasoline, then you'd think that reverse would still work. Again, I don't know. If you know more about these things, let me know in the comments. Uh, this is a kind of a gray area for me. I just think it's super cool that they kept the transmission and they just changed what propels the vehicle. You know, you still get to push the clutch. You still get to change the gears. They just changed what powers the vehicle you know gasoline to electric i'm sure the charging of the batteries is relatively rudimentary right you get it home you just charge it i think most of these conversions are pretty low on range i mean like under 100 miles 50 60 70 miles something like that but that's uh that's today's junkyard oddity Again, I like making these junkyard wanderings videos because you just never know what you're going to see. I love to share the weird stuff that I find. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.